Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Jose from MicroAPIs.io and in this video we talk about middleware. So what is middleware? Middleware is a component that in most web servers allow us to pre-process a request before it reaches our controllers. So the controllers usually are the functions or the methods that implement endpoints or URLs in our web server. And before a request reaches that point, we have to pre-process it. We have to pass the headers, the uh, payload, the, we have to pass the URL so that we can map it to the right controller. So all of those things happen before we can actually work with the data that users are sending to our server. And that happens in the preprocessors, uh, usually the middleware. And so in most web servers, we have the ability to create custom middleware. So if we want to apply custom specific preprocessing validation to our requests, perhaps to apply specific validation to the payloads, to the data that users are sending, or to check the headers, to specify that we are only accepting data from specific headers or to create rate limiting functionality that allows us to control how users are interacting with the website. All of those things, we can do them in, uh, in middleware. And so it's very important to, uh, to know how to create middleware. Personally, I use middleware a lot for authorization and, and authentication purposes that allows you to uh, wrap all of this functionality into a single place and keep in, and keep it in that place so that you only have to make changes to to that middleware function or method or class when you have to make changes to your valid to your authentication and authorization functionality so most uh, web frameworks have a way of creating middleware in flask we sometimes call them plugins in fast api we have a very nice interface for creating middlewares so we can do it with uh, decorators uh, function decorators or with classes and so in this video i'm going to show you how to create middleware using both approaches in fast api in other videos we're going to see how we do that for flask django and other frameworks and we're going to see how we can do very interesting things with middleware in this video we're just going to keep it simple we just want to know how to create middleware all right so with that said let's get on to the work we're going to start from the beginning here. I'm in an empty folder. There's nothing here. And so the first thing we're going to do is to initialize the, uh, the application with poetry. So we're going to say poetry in it. And we're going to have all the default um, elements here. So let's just put my name. We do that. We just keep it this way. I'm going to use Python 3.10, but this is going to work with any version of Python above 3.7, I believe. Uh, definitely the most recent versions will do. Uh, we are not going to do interactive uh, dependencies here. We are going to install them now. So this is the a poetry file, the manifest file for our project uh, created. It contains the contents that we see here on the terminal. Now we're going to install the dependencies. And so it's going to be just a uh, fast API and UVCon. So we say poetry at fast API and UVCon because we're going to keep it super simple. So we're not, we are not going to use any additional dependencies. All right. So that, those are the dependencies. And now we're going to create a file. It's going to be a single file application. By the way, we do the poetry install and that creates the poetry dot log file that contains all the specific dependencies that, the, that we installed here. Uh, this is of course going to be in our uh, in, in a github uh, repository the the, uh, the link is in the description of the video so you can check it out for the specific dependencies and the specific poetry log file that i used here right so this is dependencies now let's create the file so we're going to say um we're going to call it server.py uh, so that's our single file application here and now i uh, have this open with pycharm you can use any editor you want um, it's just going to work the same. So we open the file and we're going to create our instance of the fast API application. So we're going to say the server. I like to call it server because it is the entry point to the server application. So this is going to be fast API. Uh, so actually we need to configure this to, uh, for the entry point to, um, to the Python binary so that it picks up the right uh, environment. So let's 
do that this way. We'll poetry shell, and I will say which Python that's going to give us the Python binary from within the virtual environment. And then we do, we come here and we say, uh, we click here on the interpreter, we say add interpreter, and we're going to pick up an existing environment, click on the three dots here, we simply paste the path that we got here for the Python binary, and we click OK, click OK, and this is going to load the um, virtual environment with all the dependencies, and we will be able to import this automatically. All right, so that's on. Now we can import. And to showcase this functionality, we are going to, are going to create a very simple endpoint, all right? So nothing complicated. Let's say server get hello. And this is going to be our hello function. No parameters, nothing fancy. We are simply going to return a message, which is hello, just that. Um, no special validation models or return models or payloads, nothing. Just want to keep it super simple so that we can focus on the actual point of the tutorial, which is to understand how we create middleware. The middleware is also going to be super simple. So now we can have uh, we can run the application. We have it here so we can say ubicon server dot server reload. So the reload flag is to make sure we reload the application when we change the files. It picks up the latest changes and here uh, if you're unfamiliar with FastAPI, this is simply telling you this is the file called server. If we have multiple files nested within each other, we would have dot notation to access the server that contains the instance of the FastAPI application, which we call server here. So we press enter. That's the application running. What I'm going to do, um, let's do it here. So so this is my GitHub profile. The repository will be, create, uh, will be here. Uh, the link will be in the description of the video. What we can do here. So we can say localhost, I know that, that one, um, so with 8,000, and that's our message, right? So that's the endpoint working fine. All right, so let's see how we add middleware now. So let's, we need a purpose for the middleware, right? So we let's say we want to have a middleware that checks every request, and it is going to reject them if they don't have the right header set uh, on the request. So like I said, middleware is something that pre-processes the request before it comes to our controller function here, right? So if the function or the request is invalid, it will be rejected before it even makes its way to this function. So the middleware we're going to create, we're going to check if there is a certain header in the request. Let's say it's going to be X user type. We put an X at the beginning because it's a custom header. You don't have to do it that way, but it is the best practice. And we're going to say if the if the header doesn't have the value of cool, for example, a certain value, we could say admin or a random hash. If it doesn't have that value, we're going to reject the request. This is obviously not for security. This is uh, the header should be used only to carry uh, relevant information about the request. It's a it's available to everyone. Anyone can set that value in the request. So it's, it's not really for security. Um, so that's going to be the middleware and and so we're going to create that now there are two ways of doing middleware in fast api we can do decorator based middleware or we can do class based middleware which one to use depends on on your goals and what you're trying to do with with the middleware once you see what they look like you we, you will get an idea of when you want you want to use each of each type of middleware we're going to start with the decorator based because it is the simplest so that would be server middleware and we have to specify the type of middleware as a, as a parameter for the decorator. Now, um, the idea is that at some point there will be different types of middleware. For now, the only type is HTTP. If you, if you check the documentation in FastAPI, only one type of middleware is supported at the moment, which is HTTP. So that's the only value we can have here. And it's going to be async, an async function. Let's say this is going to be async dev um, check header for example, and we're going to have two parameters here. We're going to have the request, which we access by putting the signature with the request object type here, and we're going to have a callback. So callback is appointed to the next middleware that we are going to have to execute. And we finish the function by returning a call to that, um, uh, to that middleware. So 
we need to input this. Right, so what we're going to say is we're going to check the headers, right? So we're going to say header is request headers get, we're going to call it X user type, for example, something like that. And so the uh, headers, they are represented as with a dictionary type of interface. So we can use this get accessor on the, on the list of headers. We're going to look for this header. It's a custom header. And if it is not set in the request, we're going to reject it. So we're going to say, um, if header is none, we're going to return a JSON response. Okay, JSON response with the status code of 401 and content error, not the right type of user. Okay, so we're going to reject something like that. Um, 401 is that it is not correctly authenticated, meaning it doesn't have an authentic authentication credentials on the request. A header is in this header wouldn't really be the type of authentication we would be looking for in this case, but it's a fine uh, status code to reject a request. It's missing something that we're looking for anyways, right? So that's the first check. The second check is if header is not equal to, let's say, cool. That's the value that we expect in the header. If it is not cool, we are going to return another 401 response. And if all of that passes, then we return, um, we're going to call it call next. So we're going to say call next on the request. So call next is actually the next middleware. So we are executing that middleware with the request object passed in. So that is all it takes. So if we, you know, it's decorated already, it is going to be loaded immediately when we uh, load the file in memory. So the file is already reloaded, the application, because it is with this uh, reloading flag. So we can come here and try to access the server. Now we get the message, not the right type of user. So we will do it from the terminal now, because we need to be able to set the headers here. So we're going to say uh, curl HTTP localhost 8000 hello and we're going to put the header so next user type it's going to be cool but that's a, a server error so what happened here um, oh, uh, i forgot to put an await here that's it so if we call the endpoint now we get the message uh, because it, it has the right header with the right value if it was something else it wouldn't uh, it works oh we didn't return here either so let's put it and if we do now finally all right so that is super simple right the some very simple preprocessing here in this case just checking the headers you could use it for many other things you can you can do some rate limiting of user requests. You can do a uh, check for the origin of the requests and block certain types of IPs, for example. You can do, um, you can lock the payload or some parts of the payload um, at this point if you wanted to. Uh, you can do a, a, a large number of things. And I'll make a video later to do an example of this rate limiting to see how many cool things you can do here. But this is just super simple to keep it down to the point. So this is with the decorator example. Now let's do a class-based middleware because that's going to be very useful when you want to do more complex stuff. But this is, you know, very simple middleware. It's fine as a, as a decorator, something like this. But if, what if we want to do something more, more complex? Then we want to put that in a class somewhere else and register it here. So we're going to do it like this. Class check user type header. So this is our class and we're going to say this inherits from base HTTP middleware. All right. So this comes from a starlet and this is a very low level, well, relatively low level class to, uh, to do this pre-processing. And this function has an expected, um, 
interface. So we need to have a method here called dispatch with this signature. Dispatch, all right? And this is already picked up by PyCharm, so I only have to press enter and it creates the signature that the method needs to have. If it doesn't have this signature, it's not gonna work. So it's gonna have to have this request object and the cool next reference to the next middleware. So let's import those things also. Those references is gonna return a response object. And we're gonna do exactly the same thing that we did before. So um, we're gonna say header is uh, request headers get x user type if header is none return the JSON response with the status code of 401 and um, the content is message invalid user type and we say um, if header is not equal to call, we return the same, and otherwise we return the call to the next middleware in the chain, and eventually we will go back to our controllers. So we say call next request, and here is actually giving us a hint. It's a good thing of using the um, all these type hints, right? It's telling us this is not, watch out, this is not a response object, so we have to await, and that's correct. Okay, so here's our class middleware. Super simple in this case, so a class may be uh, an overkill, but if we want to do more complex things that go into other methods, and then it's nice to wrap up that into uh, its own class. And then we would put that into another file, so we would have maybe a folder called middleware, and our various types of middleware go there. So this might be check user type header, uh, for example, that's the name of the file. Our class goes there with all the functionality that is needed to do this correctly. And then we come to this file and we say, we import it here, right? And we say server at middleware, check user type header, and that's all. Um, we might need, in some cases, to add configuration so we can accept configuration in the initialization of the middleware. Um, for example, if we have some values that depend on the on the platform or the environment, for example, in dev, we might say cool dev, in production, maybe it's cool prod or something like that. And then that configuration would go here. We can put it here. So we'll register the middleware, now it's activated, and we can come back to the server, uh, it's reloaded. So if we make another request, let's go to the browser to uh, proof it works, invalid type of user, just to show you if we remove that line and we do this again, it's going to work because it's not the, the middleware is not having any effect. We enable the middleware and that's now checking the right type of user. If we make the request with the cool um, user type, now it works. So that's all it takes. That's how you create middleware in FastAPI. You have these two choices between the decorator-based and the class-based. I personally go with decorators when it is super, super simple, and I go with classes when it is uh, something more complicated that I want to wrap up in, a, in its own class. Maybe it needs some state or something, then it goes into a class. Uh, so that's all for, for now. Um, in another video, we will see a more interesting example of write limiting using middleware. And I'm also planning to create another tutorial to create middleware with Flask. And then we will do also middleware for authorization, authentication, and all those complex things. All right, so that was everything. If you like this video, please like, uh, subscribe to the channel, uh, make a comment. Um, if you're interested in learning about other topics related to Fast API, Python, or APIs or web development, Please uh, leave your suggestions in the comments. Share this video with anyone who might benefit from it, your colleagues, your friends or family. And if you want to learn more about uh, API and web development in general or working with Python or API security, check out my website, learn.microapis.io. I'm currently working on a whole series of courses about API and web development. I'm going to be uploading them very soon. And so if you want to learn more about these topics, check out the page. And if you have suggestions or you wish me to create courses on a specific topics, leave your suggestions in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Thank you so much and see you soon.